Welcome to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast, the official podcast of Ryan Johnson Ministries. This podcast was created for the purpose of equipping others for the advancement of the kingdom of God. We hope that you enjoy this episode and encourage you to subscribe to the Blacksmith Chronicles today. For more information about Ryan Johnson Ministries, please visit www.ryanjohnson.us or email us directly at info at ryanjohnson.us. Hey guys, welcome to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast. This week, I'm very honored to have a guest that is way across the pond, as they would say back in the day, but nevertheless, I'm very honored. She has a phenomenal book out that's been recently published by Destiny Image. Amongst other things that she's involved with is many things, not an individual person doing an individual thing. She's got her hand involved in so many areas to advance and equip the kingdom of God. So without further ado, I want to welcome this week's guest to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast, Miss Sarah Jane Beggart. And I don't know if I'm saying that pronouncing right. It's in my head, but however it comes out, I'm just going to go Sarah Jane from here on out. <laughs> Sarah Jane, thank you so much for being a part of the Blacksmith Chronicles. Oh, I'm excited to be here, Ryan. Thanks very much for having me. And it sounds like we're kindred spirits because you've been to Scotland anyway and, and the UK. So yeah, we are uh, coming live from the Hebridean Islands, great islands of revival, obviously, Lewis and beyond. I'm actually in the Inner Hebrides, but the weather has been wild and windy, but I'm glad to be with you from here today. <laughs> so there may be people that's coming on and they're going, okay, who's Sarah Jane? I may be familiar. I'm not familiar. Give us a little bit of a glimpse of who Sarah Jane is. So I am, well, I'm mom and wife um, to young adult children, but I am a director of Global Prophetic Alliance, which some of you may know from various things that we do online including Power Hour or Par Hour, as Emma Stark likes to say. And I've worked with Emma and David Stark um, in Glasgow since 2009, since the ministry started. And so we're 13 years on in that journey in March. And my responsibility has been in areas such as um, marketplace over the years, but also prayer. Most recently, I've got a real burden for uh, intercession, prophetic intercession, spiritual warfare, strategy, and um, I spend a lot of time uh, leading prayer initiatives, so I lead the British Isles Prayer Watch, which is all the national watchmen, or a lot of them, I shouldn't say all, because some of them are watching this going, I'm not on it, but um, a, a lot, hello watchmen, a lot of the national watchmen from the British Isles, which means Wales, Ireland, Scotland and England all together. Uh, we've been praying together for some years and I, and I, I lead that. Um, uh, what else do we do? Um, I am a lead seer in the British Isles, which means that I train a lot of seer prophets, capital S-E-E-R, and also train and have trained and equipped a lot of people in uh, the unseen realm engagement. So seeing, sensing, hearing, tasting, touch, smell, all of that. And I'm, I'm bringing that um, to some of our prophetic schools from Global Prophetic Alliance. Uh, I lead something called World Prayer Watch as well, which is online. So there's lots of all of those things that we do. But really what I do is, and I've got a passion for, is advancing the kingdom of God, like many of us out there, advancing the kingdom of God with violence, if we have to, to push back and displaced darkness and actually equipping us the church to be victorious in that to be well informed through revelation and to see what we're doing to only do what jesus did uh which is watch what the father's doing and partner with him so that's what it really is my umbrella kind of thing if you will and i have real passion for just the hunger of knowing God, the hunger of, of yeah, loving him and uh, knowing Jesus and, and hopefully imparting some of that passion and catalyzing people in it where, as and when I can. So yeah, there's lots of things, but that hopefully gives a summary. So when do you have time to do anything? I mean, <laughs> well, the trick is Ryan only to do what God tells you to do when he tells you to do it. So you don't get burnt out with exhaustion. <laughs> and also just that, yeah, the balance is actually how often do we need to do these things to keep the rhythm? So for example, the British House prayer watches once a week, some of the other initiatives are twice a month or, you know, so you have to kind of, you also have to be a good delegator. 
as yeah. well. And uh, and the point is that we don't hold everything ourselves. We're actually equipping and releasing. Um, and so I, I just say that to say I'm leading some stuff to help you see where I am. But actually, ultimately, it's about releasing and equipping as many as possible um, so that we can all work together, isn't it? It really is. And, you know, before we kind of dive into uh, understanding seer prophets and tapping into the invisible realm, the spiritual, especially heaven, I, I do want to ask you a question about, because you brought up, you know, intercessory prayer and the prayer network, but then you, you about how to engage in spiritual warfare. And the reason I want to yeah, ask this question is there are a lot of people in the United States that the minute you mention spiritual warfare, they kind of take a step back. It's something that they don't want to engage in. They often oh, don't want really? to acknowledge. They don't want to um, really kind of encounter anything that may be uh, challenging to them. So why is it it is so important for you as someone who is strategically praying and equipping other people in intercessory prayer to know how to engage in prayer in the midst of spiritual warfare. Absolutely. Well, I think, excuse me, while I've got an itchy nose here, um, we have, I think, to acknowledge that as those who are in the kingdom of God, that we are born into a war, whether we like it or not. And the war is the kingdoms against each other. So the king kingdom of heaven versus if you will what we could loosely term the kingdom of darkness but really it's the enemy being thrown to earth displaced to earth as we read in Ezekiel he's thrown there he has a short time he's vexing and frustrating and wearing out the saints and we need to be those who understand what it is to co-labor with Christ as we're called to do as citizens of heaven and displace darkness and when I say violently, if we have to, because the kingdom of God suffers violence. And so I always think we're not all about warfare, as in I wake up every morning ready to wage war. You know, it's not that. But it's it's the whole point of when we are positioned and aligned in Christ and we truly know as little Christ, little anointed ones, that we are washed in his authority, Matthew 28, all authority, it, he said, has been given to him on earth and in heaven, all authority then should be ours. And if the government of God rests on his shoulders, then as the body of Christ, it rests on our shoulders. So there's a responsibility that we have to step in to say, okay, I volunteer, Lord, into this, that if you're saying I have all authority in you, and that um, I have basically that mandate, if you will, to um, advance the kingdom, then there is that sense of how do I do that? I do that by aligning with your government, Isaiah 9, you know, Isaiah 9, and aligning with his government and his peace, of which there is no end, aligning with the kingdom of God and the values of the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy. I align in that sense of the, the knowledge of I am in Christ and also Christ in me, the hope of glory. So I'm we're in like this Jesus sandwich, I like to think of it. In John 17, where John, uh, sorry, Jesus prays in John 17, Father, may they be one as you and I are one, you and me and I and them, et cetera, et cetera. This kind of, we're all in it together. We're in Christ, Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's in the Father, we're in Jesus. And so we're completely as one and we are one in spirit. Remember the scripture that talks about when we're in Christ, we are one in spirit. So in all of those alignments with Jesus, then we are, we should be washed with that mindset of, I have all authority in Christ, but I only do what I see the father doing like Jesus did. I don't go around waging warfare here, there and everywhere. So I can fully understand how people are a little bit cautious, especially when you can read testimonies of people getting toasted in warfare, when they've gone up against you know let's use one that i have to say scotland repents 
and England repents for a lot is Freemasonry. So, you know, you might think, well, as the church, it's our responsibility to go against the spirits of Freemasonry. Now, if we just decided to do that in our town or our city or our nation, um, apropos of nothing and just think that was a good idea, then, you know, we should expect to get toasted in a way because we're not doing what we see the father do. So if the if the father is moving and saying it is now time to deal with the strong man of Freemasonry and here's the strategy, then we appropriate our authority in that context. So for me, when we have these conversations with, with other Christians about warfare, because some are very much for it and, and over egg it and go too far, just let me at the enemy, that isn't appropriate. And neither is it appropriate, I don't think, to be pacifist in the sense of, I'm not here to wage war, I'm just here to love people. Well, we love people and we release the love of God, but if the father who is a mighty man of war, Isaiah 42, you know, he's rising up as a mighty man of war, as he's rising up as a woman in childbirth in Isaiah 42, there's a, there's a violence and there's a sound and there is something that needs to come forth from the church in this hour as we get awakened to who we are with the authority that we carry. And so when we have those together, authority, the mandate with the strategy, this is your mandate. You know, if God talks to you, Ryan, I want you to go and take out the spirit of religion in England or wherever he's going to send you. And this is how you're going to do it. That's your mandate. And then the other part is the timing. So authority, mandate and strategy and timing. When those three things line up, there's always victory. And I think we have to study like David, for example, King David, who God always gave a strategy to, this is how you defeat your enemy. But David didn't run around going, this is the strategy for everything. He waited on the Lord, got the strategy and then moved out. There are some times in our lives when we're supposed to not war, but there are very definite times when we are called to. And this, this actually is one of those. And um, so we need to be awakened to it and not, and not afraid of it. I, I would love to camp out here and just dive into this so much more because this is, I enjoy this so much, but I do have to get people um, involved in something because of what you're doing beyond that is you have a brand new book out called Seeing Beyond, How to Make Supernatural Sight Your Daily Reality. And this is one of those things that you're coming from the understanding of a seer prophet, but you're also coming as a daughter of God, understanding your identity, what your purpose is, what you're advancing, your call in the events in the kingdom, but also just the fundamental truths of, of son or daughter, an heir and an ambassador of Christ. And you're trying to teach people that there is a realm that you can not only sense, you can see, you can operate from. Help the, the, those that are watching and listening to this, why this book was so important for you to be able to put pen to paper mm -hmm. and get in the hands of just the body of Christ and those that are coming to Christ. Sure. Well, I think the, the whole point of this is the seeing church and the sensing church is the victorious church that when we um, come with that mindset of John 9, where Jesus said again, I only do what I see the father do, Jesus saw what the father was doing. So therefore the, the, there's an assumption there, I think that we as little Christ get to see what the father's doing. And when Jesus said the kingdom is at hand, there's that sense of the ability and the ease in which we can apprehend the kingdom of God and almost like pull it in to our daily reality. And so for me, you know, some of us might pray and see transformation, like we might pray for healing and see somebody transformed. We may not be seeing it by and of the spirit as it's happening. But I think we, we understand that if we are spiritual beings first, which we are, I mean, there's a lot of teaching on all of this that would take hours, but we have to understand that we are spirit before we're flesh. And actually, when God said he put eternity in the hearts of man, that we know through Christ Jesus, we live on in, in this 
this realm of eternity that our fleshly bodies don't necessarily survive in. We're given a different form of body, but we have this spiritual body and this spiritual realm that is real, where the heavens are real and where the um, the unseen realm is present at hand, as Jesus said, where we get to um, acknowledge it. And then as I believe, as we acknowledge it and say, this is that, this is actually a real state, if you will, that, that we... Uh, can be in and can engage in as Christians, we can see things like Acts 7, where Stephen, as he's being stoned, and his physical body is being destroyed, he sees God before him in all his glory. And he is transformed in his body, and his face is transformed as he is seeing something in the realm of the spirit appear before him. And, you know, we could go to... Um, many other scriptures and and read this the bible again with new eyes in this if you if you read and thought well lord show me everywhere where the unseen realm breaks through into the seen natural earthly realm then there are many occasions when angels show up and reveal themselves from the unseen realm there are many occasions when we um see in visions and dreams of daniel and ezekiel where uh, the wheels within wheels of chapter one, Ezekiel, are right there before him in the Kaba River. So he's there in the natural, in, on standing somewhere on the earth, but the spirit realm opens up to him to let him see things. Why? So that, I believe, so that we can understand God more. And for that, we go to Ephesians 1, where Paul's prayer is very much you know, he's praying for us, he's praying for them in Ephesians, in Ephesus, but he's praying for us as well, I believe, today to say, I'm praying for you that the spirit of wisdom and revelation will rest upon you so that you will know God more. There's that sense of actually, it's about not knowing information for information's sake, but it's about the revelation of Christ and the revelation of Yahweh as the Godhead, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, that he is desiring us, as David said, to seek his face and to seek first the kingdom, Matthew 6, 6. And actually these words about seeking make us think, well, if I'm seeking something, I'm looking and I'm needing to engage my eyes. I'm needing to actually focus my attention. I'm needing to acknowledge that something needs to be found if, if the word of God is saying, seek and look. And I think again, you read the seers, you read Daniel, you read Ezekiel, and they say things like, I looked and I saw. So the seeing comes after the looking when we look at biblical principles. And I think in the book, I talk very much about, you know, start with Jesus because it's, it's him who is the gate and the doorway. But actually that we need to move into that place of expectation that if the word of God and Jesus is saying to us, seek look we know those who seek will find and there is that oh well lord if it's there for me to see i'm choosing to gaze and i'm choosing to focus i know there's a lot of things in quote unquote christianity that people can get out of balance they can mm -hmm. carry it too far you know for example you mentioned spiritual warfare demonology there's a lot of people that can get into demonology and care it too far. Everything has a demon. Everyone has a demon. They, they're seeing demons at every, you know, yeah, every corner. And then mm -hmm. when we talk about a spirit realm, we talk about heaven, there's those that easily get off balance, off kilter, and they are obsessed with angels or they're obsessed with feathers and, and, and all these other things. And I get all that. And I know that there's all those individuals that, kind of pick apart why it's wrong to see and want to see or to ask because people get out of balance. But I am yeah. curious when we're talking about a heavenly realm, we're talking mm -hmm. about being able to see what the father sees, hear what the father hears. Mm -hmm. What's something that we typically just don't take in consideration of this is why it's so important to be able to tap into this realm because again i know there's people they 
there's the angelic side, they get obsessed with all that, but is there something that is often not thought about in the simplicity of seeing in a realm that is not with our natural eyes? Oh, well, I think I, I totally agree that people get out of balance very easily. And I think we can all get out of balance very easily if we don't start and end and, and continue this journey of seeing beyond the natural realm and doing what Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4, 18, of looking into the unseen because that is eternal versus focusing on the, the seen that is temporal. But if we don't focus on Jesus as the gate in the doorway, into those realms of unseen, then we can be being led by other spirits or other agendas. And this is when we need all the gifts of revelation that are available to us in 1 Corinthians 12, 13, 14. There's that sense of actually we need to have understanding of the discerning of spirits. We need to know what's motivating us. You know, is it Holy Spirit motivating me, yeah. you know, purely? Is it my human spirit that's motivating me because I want an experience and an encounter or is it even a demonic spirit because of wrong access either intentionally when perhaps you know before Jesus um, before he was Lord um, somebody might have been involved in occultic practices knowingly or unknowingly or perhaps generationally uh, somebody's opened a door you know if one of their ancestors was involved in clairvoyancy or spiritualism or mediumship or something like that as an obvious one then these are doors and access points to the spirit realm that you do want to close and I go in detail in that in chapter five of the book because there are things that get in the way of us having a pure experience and encounter so we have to learn to appropriate what we know of being under the lordship of Christ Submission is so key. And this is again, Ryan, you, you mentioned about people going off on a tangent. We go off on a tangent when we're not submitted rightly. So James 4, 7, submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. I don't know about you, but I've heard lots of people quote, resist the devil and he will flee. Forgetting the first part of that, submit to God. And so the submission to God is also submission to his authority and his godly authority. So I've seen over the years, a lot of seers and seer types, mystic types go off on a tangent because they haven't been willing to submit and not being willing to actually acknowledge the fact that, that perhaps their emotions, rejection issues, isolation issues, because being a seer, I know we're strange because we manifest the Holy Spirit in unusual ways. Church leaders don't know always what to do with us. And so then you can go into isolation mode and, and get stuck in rejection. And then you're like, well, I'm just going to go off and do it anyway. And you can end up down rabbit holes in the spirit that you don't want to go down and find it very difficult to come back. And so for me, accountability is key. Being submitted to authority is key. Yes to God, but also somebody in your life that, that I would call a loose term of a spiritual director, somebody you can check with, you know, am I completely off track? And to be able to share some of those things with, because if we're going to be isolationists, who, as you say, get fixated on angels, demons, or other things, or even groups of people that do that, we very quickly tip out of balance and get stuck. I, I've always said, you always have to be aware of the ones that say, I only have to answer to God and God alone. Um, oh, and, yeah. and, and I have to admit, and it's interesting because I have it opened up. My favorite chapter is under authority, <laughs> mm. so, which you tapped into the submitting of that because here in the United mm -hmm. States, I see that a lot of times, especially in a prophetic world, um, uh, prophetic individuals, they have a, a difficult time submitting themselves to spiritual authority or leaders. And, and that's just not in church culture. Those same individuals sometimes have difficulties keeping, keeping jobs because they mm -hmm. don't submit to their supervisor or their, or their boss mm -hmm. or whatever. But there's something here in one of these, um, in, in, in ironically page 100, I, this is, I, I love this part. You said, we all have authority in Christ, and there's never a moment that once you've given your life to the Lordship King Jesus that you don't have it. 
Mm. As Christians, we're often not aware of it, or we believe in some way that it's diminished or limited. Why is it so difficult for Christians just to fully comprehend, understand, and receive that that lordship, everything that Christ had is truly given to us? Why do we have this tendency to um, as you say, diminish it or limit ourselves, mm. because it, it's, this is, in my opinion, this is my opinion, this is our major stumbling block of seeing into a spirit realm, because we mm. completely go, well, that's not for me, that's not my calling, that's not what mm -hmm. I'm supposed to do, it's just, you know, I'm just a worthless sinner saved by grace, mm -hmm. but actually, if you read what you, I'm, I'm telling this to everybody, if you read everything that Sarah James put in this book, this is not for apostles, prophets, teachers, pastors, and evangelists. This is for every son and daughter of God that Amen. you can tap into this. But we have this tendency to diminish or limit ourselves in that. Why do you think that is? Oh, I think there's a lot of reasons, don't you? I mean, I think a lot, a lot, a lot of, well, we could start even with, we've been preaching a gospel of salvation versus a gospel of the kingdom for decades and probably centuries. And so the gospel of the kingdom um, you realize that there is a Lord and there is a King and that, that we come under his Lordship and we come under his Kingship. When we submit to that, it's a lot easier to get free and get momentum into things that Holy Spirit would want to lead us into. But when we come into a gospel of salvation that says, you know, I'm saved and, and then almost like quite often and having worked with a lot of people in the marketplace who are Christians uh, over the years, cause that's my background before I, uh, uh started working full-time as a prophet as it were this sense of actually i'm saved but then how do i live out my life as a christian and then we have those conversations in the west about you know sacred secular divide and my life with the lord is the holy bit where i go to church which is only two percent of my life on a sunday or some prayer meetings and the rest of it i'm just waiting until I go home, you know, that used to be the mindset. I don't know if you get that in America still, but that used to be the mindset here in the British Isles and that sense of actually we're called to be, and we are citizens of heaven, citizens of the kingdom of God when we are born again and our identity is as the citizens of heaven. Therefore, if you will, we carry the flag of heaven and when we go anywhere, we're displacing any other spirit that isn't associated with the kingdom of God and so I think we we need a whole mindset shift and in this era of transformation where the Lord is saying everything is new and this is the era of the Holy Spirit and this is the era of the church who lets God hook our hearts to his and we hook our hearts to him and we are married if you will to the fear of the Lord versus fear of man that we start to see a separation of those who are willing to say I'm all in God I'm hungry for you I'm hungry to know you and your ways you know one of the prayers that I've been praying uh, very often over the last couple of years since the whole COVID situation started, God gave me the prayer from Psalm 86. Teach me a way, O Lord, that I would walk in your truth. Give me an undivided heart that I would fear your name. And there's that sense of actually we get to access the way of the Lord when we allow ourselves to say, as we would say in Scotland, nay limits, no limits on my life. You know, there's no limits on my life. There is no um, expression of my life that you don't have access to, God. And I think we have as well built this construct of church that is almost like that movie, The Truman Show. Do you remember the movie, I The do. Truman Show with Jim Carrey, where Jim Carrey's living a life he thinks is real, and then he gets to the edge of it and walks out of the door. And I feel like God has us there as the church and he's saying to us around the world but particularly the church in the west you've been playing at church and now i'm taking you to the end of yourself so that you actually walk through the the, the door of the manifestation of what is the ecclesia or ecclesia as you would say what is that manifested when we come into that space of manifesting the kingdom of god it's all all our lives all authority 
and all may prophesy. 1 Corinthians 14, 31, all may prophesy, all may have revelation. And as you said, it's not just for the few or the chosen. It is for all of those who are in Christ Jesus. And so I think we have to say, God, give me the mind of Christ for this era, this Holy Spirit invasion era, that we want to be those who are on the cutting edge, not left behind in some old model of what church should look like or what even the gospel looks like, but actually fully manifest the kingdom and his ways. You know, we even get freaked out by things that Jesus said, like the first sign of the kingdom is if I, if, if, if a devil is driven out of you with the finger of God, you know, so we get, we get a bit antsy about these things, but that is spiritual warfare right there, displacing the demonic. And you, you said that earlier, I had about, you know, people looking for demons, there's a demon in everybody and every corner there probably is but we don't go looking for the <laughs> demons first we go looking for the glory of god and the gold um so yeah i think there's there's a there's a lot there's a lot in that question i think that we we are saying lord unravel us detangle us you know um get us out of where we've got stuck and get us out of where we've got stuck ourselves and we can't get ourselves out as the church into what it is to live as those in the reality position as citizens of heaven. Yeah, I genuinely believe that there's a difference between living a Christ-like life and living life like Christ. Christ life people will talk to lepers like Christ people will touch them. Mm. And there's a vast difference because th there is this, this hang up for a lot of individuals to achieve the goal of being a Christian. And in that goal, they now tarry and wait on the Lord to carry them home. And that becomes the mindset of that. And I genuinely believe mm -hmm. that there are times where the enemy has out strategized the ecclesia, because mm -hmm. I, I don't mean it across the board, a blanket statement that we've got our um, defeat handed to us, but I'm just saying there's times where we did not pursue the strategy of heaven. We didn't seek what heaven was saying. We recklessly bind and loose because we feel like we can just go do that, but we didn't hear what heaven said to bind mm -hmm. and loose. Um, it is one thing to have the authority because you've been given the keys. It is another thing to know what the key goes to. Mm -hmm. And so this is one of the struggles that I find with individuals in the body of Christ, when we talk about a seer realm and understanding and the invitation, there's an invitation to come up higher. One of the things I feel like we're missing is not just the, and I don't know how to word it any other way, but the glitz and the glamour of the unseen realm, it's the wisdom. It's the knowledge. It's the understanding. It's the blueprints, the strategy. I go back to Moses. Mm -hmm. Moses is told to build a tabernacle in the wilderness. He's not simply told just construct something. He's carried to a realm and sees and has the actual blueprint of the throne room of God. Mm -hmm. And so my mind automatically goes, what would happen if we, as body in Christ and ecclesia, understood that it's not simply about tapping into an unseen realm to say, oh, I've been there. I've seen that. It's amazing. It's awesome. But it's a place in which we get the wisdom. We get the strategy. We get the things in order to further advance and equip the body of Christ. In saying all that, I, I'm, I'm saying you're teaching people, especially through your book and, and all the other things that you're part of, your classes, your teaching, your online material, everything that you're doing, you're trying to teach individuals that the unseen realm is something that is not as difficult as we perceive it to be, that it's an open access. I want you, if you can, can you just speak to those that are listening and, 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 and further give them the understanding that the invitation is theirs? Absolutely. I think that's the word, actually, Ryan, is it's accessible. It's not difficult. And the only, if you will, prerequisite that I would say would make it safe is that you are born again in Christ Jesus and that you've made him your Lord. So if you're listening to this or watching this and feeling like, well, I, 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 uh, 
I, I've had experience of seeing in the spirit or I've experienced feeling in the spirit and I actually don't want to go there um, or I am nervous about it because I've been told it's new age and witchcraft and all of those things and there is that sense of you know we have to acknowledge that the enemy has done a good job of counterfeiting because he can only copy what is already created by the creator and he is obviously trying to steal kill and destroy that which is ours as our inheritance but there's that sense of actually when adam walked with god in the cool of the day actually which we quote very often that was actually adam in the original language walking in the spirit with god walking in that that thin place with god where he communed with him and so when god came after they'd eaten of the fruit and he said where are you adam there's that sense of he'd left that realm where he met with god and he'd moved into the realm where he needs to hide himself and in that flesh if you will in that flesh realm and so there's that sense of actually our inheritance is to be a people who walk with god in the garden but actually we get to see each other and hear each other when we're doing it um and so it's it's access granted through christ but it's the i think first of all the knowledge that we've we've demonized and been unhelpful with people who have experienced that, a lot of whom are Christians that I talk to would be seeing things and hearing things when they were children and parents wouldn't know what to do with them as an example, or they started seeing and hearing things in the spirit, but then whoever they talked to in church leadership had no grid for it and, and thought, well, that doesn't sound right or was nervous about it um, and shut it down. For me, I went to a Church of Scotland um, uh, church and for years was schooled in scripture and reading the word, you know, it was like, like we are often in the Presbyterian church, Father, Son and Holy Scripture. Nobody ever talked to me about Holy Spirit gifts or speaking in tongues or anything about prophecy or anything like that. I mean, you read it and then think, well, where's the manifestation of all of that? But when I started to experience after being baptized in the Holy Spirit, and again, I go into that story in the book, my, um, oh, uh, the, the minister, the pastor, if you will, of the church that I was in was very quick, but very prayerful to say only this. I believe this is of God, Sarah Jane. I don't fully understand it, but I believe it's of God. So almost like go on that journey with him and, you know, you can talk to me about it. Those words were the most liberating for me because I just thought this was completely normal. When you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, everybody sees things and starts hearing things. But I soon found out that wasn't the case at the time. However, Ryan, I do believe that this is our portion as those born in Christ, that we are supposed to be those who are normally seeing and interacting with the unseen realm as and when God ordains it. I don't believe we're supposed to be weirdly um, interacting with the unseen realm all the time because that then makes us unreachable for people that we're supposed to bring to Jesus. Yeah. So there needs to be a, a context and a bridge and a, and a meeting point, doesn't there, of heaven meeting earth. Let your kingdom come let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven so there has to be that sense of yes engaging the kingdom in the unseen but bringing it back if you will and grounding it and rooting it from christ back to earth yeah and, and gosh there's so many things i want to i could just so we could talk this, about i know this right could now. go on it just opens up so many things it just runs through my mind and i want to go with it but for the sake of time and such, I could ask so many other questions and maybe there's a question I didn't get to ask. I often want to give my guests an opportunity to share anything, kind of have a final word, a final thought that something is on their heart. And you may have covered everything you feel like you need to cover, but if there is something you want to share with those that are watching and listening, uh, I want to give you that opportunity to share that. Well, thanks a lot, Ryan. I really appreciate that. And I think there's so much that we could say, and I feel like we've covered a lot of ground like this in a shallow kind of a, you know, 
in a shallow kind of a way because because of time but i would say if if you're feeling some stirring in the spirit in your spirit of you know there may be more to this then allow god to take you on that journey and i do encourage you to read scripture with those lenses of the unseen breaking into the the natural realm of earth where you can see it all the way through the new testament you know the the servant girl rhoda answering the door thinking it's peter's angel versus peter i mean how many people here knock at the door and think that must be sarah jane's angel you know because it must have been normal for them to see each other's angels i think if she was thinking that or they were thinking that um there's that sense of um you know we we can over spiritualize things but we've also shut ourselves down to the possibility that some things yeah. are spiritual when they actually are and so i think balance in all things but actually pray those prayers from paul uh, the apostle in ephesians 1 17 to 19 read it and understand that actually when we come with the motive of knowing god more and praying prayers like Matthew 6, 6, seek first the kingdom. I want to seek first the kingdom, God, and I want to see it. I want to see it manifest, not just in you and I in the flesh and blood kind of a way, but I want to see it manifest in the spirit. I want to see it be apprehended in the spirit. And there's loads of testimonies that I give in the book of, of God opening my eyes, opening my senses, and many others who we've taught or, or connected with over the years and i'm sure some of you listening will be some of those people who've experienced seeing and sensing in the spirit but some of you will be locked in fear some of you will be locked in traditional thinking of church where this is all stuff that we shouldn't be messing with and some of you will be just locked in the i don't know this is a bit strange and a bit new but I encourage you to go on your own personal journey, just like God took me on a personal journey where years ago, I'd never seen anything. Years ago, I'd never heard anything from God. Um, I'd never had a dream and interpreted a dream. You know, I'd never had um, a vision or an encounter. But when you say, Lord, I am willing, I am willing to know you in a way that I've not known you before from that prayer of Ephesians 1, I'm willing to go on that journey. And this is the dangerous bit, whatever that looks like, God. As long as it's you, Jesus, as long as it's you, I am up for the journey. And those kinds of prayers, when you say, open the eyes of my heart, enlighten the eyes of my heart, and let me see you and know you, whatever that looks like in your timing, those kinds of prayers change your world. And so I don't want to work you up. I don't want to work people up, Ryan, into, you know, this is something amazing. I mean, it is amazing. It is amazing. And I believe it's a gift that's been given to the church for this era so that we can have victory in all circumstances. Can I can I just share one quick story? Absolutely. So this this I think helps illustrate the point. If you're having issues at home in your family, or if we're having issues in the workplace, or if we're having issues even in our city or our community, then we can look beyond what we see in the natural and get insight so my daughter sophie she was seven at the time she's 19 now she was getting bullied at school and at age seven she was struggling and i didn't realize quite how bad it was until one day she said mommy i don't want to go to school anymore so we sat down um after school actually that day i managed to get her to go after we talked you know how that goes conversations with young children but i didn't realize how bad it was i said look we're going to pray into this when you get back and we prayed and I said, right, Lord, will you open Sophie's eyes so that she can see the spirits at work in this situation? Because I talked to her about Ephesians 6, where Paul says our wrestle is not against flesh and blood. I, I talked to her about the unseen battle. And I talked to her about the fact that some people love our smell and some people hate it, scripture tells us. And, and the, the demons really don't like our smell. And so as we did that, I gave her some paper and a pen and she drew the two demons that she was being showed by the Lord in that moment. And she gave them names. One of them was called intimidation. She couldn't spell that, age seven. So I wrote that down for her. But that sense of actually, this is what's going on. And I'm, I'm trying to say, do you see that, Sophie, that this person who's bullying you 
as a, as a young girl is not the one really who's bullying you. It's these spirits behind using this girl. And she was like, I, I get it. I see it. She understood it. So we prayed, we bound the spirits, we, we uh, contained them, we prayed that prayer, something like, you know, we bind the spirits of intimidation and whatever the other one was called that escapes me now. And we contain them, we say they may not interfere with Sophie when she's at school or when she's out of it, they may not speak to her, they may not come near her. And you know what, the next day, the very next day, the head teacher who hadn't even spoken to me said, hello, Mrs. Biggert. Um, just to let you know, there's been an issue with a, a girl in your daughter's class, and we have moved her out of her class into another class, just to let you know before it became a big issue. And I was like, wow, that is fast. Um, and so I believe if God can show a seven year old with some help, he can show you what are your issues at work? What are your issues in relationships? What are your issues in advancing the kingdom of God in your life? And it's not always demons. Sometimes it's God's timing on things or Holy Spirit's doing some work in our emotions and our heart. I'm not saying it's always demons, but when we see and when we sense, when we feel or smell or taste or touch, all of those things, we have in, um, revelation and wisdom. The last top tip I will give you all is first corinthians chapter two if we really want to be a church who has spirit taught wisdom and spirit taught words meditate on first corinthians chapter two and you will begin to see that that is a doorway into greater understanding in the spirit and through the spirit of god and pray in the spirit on all occasions as paul says you will find yourself on the wildest most amazing adventure with god I absolutely love it. So how can people get connected with Sarah Jane? Ooh, well, you can get the book Seeing Beyond on Amazon uh, and Barnes and Noble in America and the Global Prophetic Alliance shop here in Scotland. If you're in different nations and you're listening to this, um, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. It's Sarah hyphen Jane Biggert, as you said, B-I-G-G-A-R-T. And um, yeah, and, and then on our YouTube channels um, for Global Prophetic Alliance, we're on there as well. So please do, yeah, please do follow us. And if we can be of any use to any of you, reach out, we'd love to help. And I definitely do want to encourage everyone, do go and get a copy of the book, See and Beyond. I, I believe it'll be a great tool for you to help more than likely unlock some things that you're already tapping into. You just don't have the definition to the words. Uh, that you're describing in yourself. So it would be a great tool. And Sarah Jane, thank you so, so much for being part of the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. And everyone else, I genuinely hope and pray that this episode has encouraged you, it's equipped you, and it has challenged you to further advance the kingdom. Until the next time, guys, we love you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for listening to the Blacksmith Chronicles podcast. It is our prayer that this episode challenged you, encouraged you, and equipped you for the advancement of the kingdom of God. For more episodes or ways that you can partner with Ryan Johnson Ministries, please go to www.ryanjohnson.us or email us directly at info at ryanjohnson.us. Please join us again soon for another episode of the Blacksmith Chronicles.